Hi everyone, this is Matteo from Codable, and in this new episode we're going to meet with Onur Demir, who will share with us his story and experience as a freelancer. He will also tell us more about working as a Codable expert, telling us more, telling us more uh, how this experience in a way changed his life. So, hey Onur, thank you for joining us in this new episode of Changing Life. We really appreciate it. Hi Matt, how are you? Yeah, I'm great. You? I'm great as well. Oh, whoa. So let's start and uh, let's start with the super easy question. Why don't you start by saying in which part of the world are you right now? Where are you from? And most importantly, how long have you been a freelancer? Uh, well, I'm from Turkey. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in uh, the capital Ankara. But for the last nine years, I'm living in Antalya, which is the south coast. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh that's all about where i'm from and uh yeah. where i live and how long i have been a freelancer mm -hmm. well i have been a freelancer all throughout my life whoa so you've never been an employee no <laughs> i guess you're the first one that i is the <laughs> first maybe. time I, that i'm hearing this story so you've always been freelancing through all yeah. your entire life well, uh, it started like, hey, I don't want to work for anyone. I just want my freedom mm -hmm. when I was in college. So I had to create something that I can sell to people, but it wasn't so easy. Then I thought, let's start a company. Yeah. And I was like a one-man uh, show. Mm -hmm. And I have been freelancing since then. Whoa. So, would you mind telling us, what do you like about freelancing? I mean, why did you choose this business path instead of ending up in a regular 9-to-5 job? Well, first of all, I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I love to work and a 9-to-5 job will not satisfy me. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. And uh, when you work hard for anyone, uh, when you uh, exceed the hours of the weekly time, they will not be paying you so well. Yeah. So instead of uh, trying to be a slave, I just wanted to be a master. Whoa. So that's a nice, nice catch, really. Yeah, and so I can set my time schedule as I want. I can work all night. I can work all day. No one can tell me when I will work or when I will sleep. Yeah. And uh, I just want to be challenged. That's mm -hmm. that's the main part. When you are free freelancing, uh, there are lots of challenges. Someday you are fixing an easy CSS. Yeah. And other day you are fixing a tremendously uh, high-end PHP code. Yeah. And one day you are dealing with a server. So. <laughs> The challenge is not always the same and it's always changing. And meanwhile, you get a great market research so that you know what people are seeking for. For example, uh, you are getting uh, freelance jobs uh, about something more frequently than uh, the others. Mm -hmm. Then you see the market needs a product like this so that we oh, can. Yeah. So uh, we have formed a company. And we are bringing our freelance experience into that company uh -huh. and we create products and sell to people. Okay, but we, we'll get that. We'll get there. I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you about this, but let me just, you know, sorry uh, to interrupt you, but uh, because we, we're going to, to, to develop this uh, further down the, you know, the interview. So okay. even if, because I have another super tough question and I wanted to ask you right at the beginning. So even if you're at the beginning of this interview, I'm going to ask you like a tough question right away. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> okay. So what does it take to be a good freelancer? And do you think anybody can be one? Well, uh, what does it take? You have to devote yourself if you want to be a freelancer. Okay. Uh, I don't know from whom I heard. Mm -hmm. But there is a saying, if you want to ruin your life, do your own job. Yeah. So being a freelancer is the exact equivalent of this saying. Yeah. If you want to be a freelancer, you have to devote yourself. You have to communicate. 
-hmm. you have to work harder than anyone you know. Yeah. And uh, if you do all those well, the rewards will be great. You will achieve great things. But first of all, freelancing needs discipline. Yeah. If you are thinking like, hey, I'm a freelancer, I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, that's wrong. No. That, that's, that's, that's the major mistake that you are going to do. And the second mistake that I come across often is that be honest uh -huh. with you and your clients. In every situation, uh, things can happen, you can deliver late, you might not be able to deliver, but be honest with yourself and your client. Yeah. Honesty will bring you more clients, that's for sure. Yeah, I totally so, agree. So there are, there are uh, three things, devoting yourself, mm -hmm. discipline, and being honest. Those are the three keys to be a good freelancer, in my opinion. Yeah. All the rest, super the, powerful. The rest, the, rest I mean. is, the rest is about luck. <laughs> yeah, luck is always and, part of and, life, you and, know. And and uh, knowledge, and knowledge can be gained. Yeah, right. So uh, now that we know how you think, <clears throat> how how you think about being a freelancer, what does it take to be a good one? You were saying that you're not only just a, a freelancer running solo. Yeah. You you made the leap. You took the leap and 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 uh, and started a company. Would you mind yeah. sharing with us this experience? I mean, what were the challenges and what are the, the motivation that uh, pushed you to, to create a company? Well, first of all, the challenges, uh, it's, I think, same in everywhere around the world, the legal issues. Oh, really? When you, yeah, when you are forming a company, there are legal things that you have to know taxes oh as, yeah as, oh yeah yeah i know so, what you mean yes of course so uh if you are trying to take a leap with no money with no consultants <laughs> it will be a challenge and i did it <laughs> a huge one yeah <laughs> and uh, i suffered it ah, so oh, really? if if anyone uh, thinks about taking the leap first save some money yeah hire some consultants and then do the thing uh, yeah. the challenge was that mm -hmm. and the second challenge is always for a company is to get clients yeah so you have to have a plan about it mm -hmm. and uh, for me it was a must to take the leap because I'm a developer mm -hmm. uh, and I'm an engineer I have no artistic skills yeah I have no design eye. Okay. I can make things work, but that's all. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we need. I needed a designer, and also uh, I was developing some products. I needed someone to support the product so I can deal with the development. Yeah. So that made three people right off the bat. So it had to be a team. Then we formed the company and. It's going well. Yeah, cool, nice, nice story. And um, okay, so back to the main topic. What made you look uh, for something new in your uh, freelancing life, in effect, like Codable? I mean, was there a specific reason, like you didn't like uh, you pre your previous jobs, the, where, uh, the way you were working before, or in a way you felt that you were missing something in your business life? Uh, in short, you are asking me why I am at Codable? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I heard Codable from a client of mine. Okay. And she was telling that it was a great place for WordPress developers. Mm -hmm. Well, at the beginning, I wasn't a WordPress developer. Okay. I was a full stack PHP developer. Okay. And I checked Codable. It was looking nice. And then I applied, mm -hmm. and uh, I can say it's a nice experience. I suppose anyone who thinks uh, themselves as an expert should come into Codable 
And uh-huh. for clients, it's also very nice uh, to be in Codable. Okay. Well, uh, as I told, I came to Codable by recommendation. From one of your clients? Yeah. And uh, how long have you been a Codable expert? Uh, three months. Three months. Okay. And how things are, uh, are going here at Codable? I mean... Well, uh, it's... I don't know uh, how to put it like, but it's been the busiest three months of my life. <laughs> really? Would you yeah. mind elaborate this a little bit? Well, uh, when I when I joined in Co- uh, Codable, it was July, uh-huh. and in two weeks I had a vacation plan. Yeah. So I had to leave for uh, ten days, mm-hmm. but. Uh, the jobs were coming in, coming in, coming in, and I was hesitating to estimate on them, but I couldn't stop myself. <laughs> so in my vacation, I was working. Yeah, <laughs> which because, is, you know. <laughs> because all the jobs were fun. Mm-hmm. And working in Codable is so much fun. When you are uh, encodable, even if you are not touching any link on the screen, uh, the intercom pop-ups, David, Chris, or any other person says, hey, please look at that, please look at that. And you just uh, try to be nice and (laughs) look at that and see, oh, that's easy, I can do it. (laughs) (laughs) And it was was so busy. And uh, when I I came back from vacation. Uh, I started doing some other jobs, etc. Then I took another vacation because it was in the plan. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been in uh, Codable for th- uh, three months, but I've been uh, like two months at work because I had one month as vacation, etc. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was a living hell, Matt. Really? <laughs> yeah, because. Uh, you just cannot believe uh, how nice to be a part of a family. I can say it's for Codable. It's a family. Oh, all the nice. experts, Thanks. all the all the Codable uh, staff, they're all helping each other. Uh, so you cannot stop yourself but work. And that was great. Uh, in three months, we did well. I think. Yeah, I think I think it too. I mean, that's a nice story. Yeah, we have we have finished six tasks. tasks. Uh huh. Yeah, so which is it, you know. Yeah, it's it's great. And um, are those? Uh, did you <clears throat> this task, this project that uh, you just mentioned, are all some sort of you know they have something in common? Or are, you know, some other, some are, I don't know, small project, other one are a little bit bigger? Well, honestly, uh, I couldn't get some small projects. All Mm -hmm. were big projects. Okay. Uh, With big, let's say, moderate projects. Not so big, not so small, but nice projects. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Small, in small projects, uh, there was too much uh, competition, you know. Uh-huh. So it wasn't easy to get uh, those projects for us. But the other ones were great. Uh, the projects were about everything. Okay. Uh, from uh, design conversion to WordPress to WooCommerce uh-huh. or uh, fixes or plugin development. Yeah. Or even consultancy. There were lots, lots of variety about the projects. Yeah, which is nice. That's that's great because uh, if you are specified on something, you can go on it and get jobs yeah. from Audible. If you are uh, doing anything that uh, comes uh, challenging to you, like me, mm-hmm. you can get jobs. For yourself as well. For example, we do not know anything about SEO in our team, uh-huh. and I see there are lots of SEO projects as well. So if yeah. I were an SEO expert, there were jobs for 
uh, that section as well. Yeah. And uh, as I told uh, previously, I'm no designer. We have an in-house designer, but we are not using uh, her for uh, our outside projects. She's only working for our inside projects. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are not touching any design jobs, but there are, there are design jobs as well. Yeah. The most surprising thing uh, about uh, Codable for us was there are also non-WordPress jobs. We did a PHP job as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably. I, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, I know that it, it happens. They are, I mean, they are very rare. Let's say one to thousand, but they come in. Yeah, probably this was, I don't know if it, if it was like a new client or just a, a recurring one that had also like a PHP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a recurring client. Yeah. And uh, okay, nice, nice story. And um, another question. So if you look at your past freelancing life, and then you fast forward to today. How things have changed for you? I mean, are they any different? Yeah. Uh, when you are freelancing outside of Codable, mm -hmm. uh, if you do not have a backup plan, or if you are in a country like mine, yeah. where there is no so much web development jobs that you can get from uh, uh, your uh, surrounding, you are doomed. You cannot get any jobs. If you even get jobs, they will be very cheap. Uh -huh. And uh, you will not be able to pay your rent as well. Okay. Uh, when I uh, got in Codable, I said, if I were only doing freelancing, that would be enough. Uh -huh. Because uh, Codable gives the uh, value of the freelancer. They, uh, for example, in other freelancing platforms, uh, the client is always right. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, the client is always right and they can uh, punish you even if you deliver. Yeah. But in Codable, that's not the case. Codable first values the experts and uh, the client they are equal in Codable. yeah they're equal yeah and, and uh, Codable, I, I was not a believer when i read the story mm -hmm. when i see inside of the Codable, i get the exact picture Codable handpicks the clients yeah yeah we do so, that so uh if you if you are a freelancer that's a blessing <laughs> yeah. because because uh, in many freelancing platforms, you will see many huge projects, but they're never, ever serious about the project. Mm -hmm. In Codable, that's not the case. Every project is a serious project. Every client is a seri serious client, and Codable covers your back. For example, uh, for a job I was about to apply, mm -hmm. I was warned by Codable staff, uh, that the job will contain some design work and I have applied with no design abilities. Yeah. Are you sure? And uh, when I saw it, wow, okay, I, I'm withdrawing my estimate. I'm not in that. Yeah. That's great because they are protecting the client as well as the... Uh, the developer, the expert. The developer, yeah. The client forgot uh, to write the design job in the project definition and codable staff were waiting for people to write in there so that they will warn the people yeah that, that's that's something great yeah yeah no i i know that this is you know some, a real value to, to yeah, a freelancer yeah and also to the client i mean yeah for client for developer yeah for client because they get the worth of their money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Or developer because they get the worth of the, their time. Yeah. When when you are in other freelance platforms, you will see uh, quotes like ten dollars per hour. Yeah, in yeah, I know that. Audible, yeah. that's not the case. No, we are totally opposite to that. Yeah. Yeah, and I like it. 
<laughs> That's great to hear. <laughs> it, 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 it's like it's like the Picasso tale. Uh, Picasso is uh, doing a painting uh -huh. uh, next to a river, and a guy is watching him doing the painting. And Picasso finishes the painting on the canvas, and the guy goes next to Picasso and says, Master, I want to buy the picture you just drew. Picasso says, it's, let's say, $10,000. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, it took you an hour to draw it. And then Picasso replies, no, it took 50 years and an hour to draw it. Yeah. So yeah. being a developer is like that. You are putting an hour job, but uh, everything is not done in that hour. Your all past experiences, your all knowledge, your all uh, lifetime is yeah. in that hour. So it has to be priced uh, well, and Quadable does that. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. It's one of the things that I think that it, it sets out it sets us apart from the competition like other platforms well, honestly you do not have any competition <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that so uh last question i'm uh yeah just one last superficial question is i know some other expert like you after working with us for quite some time have been able to, you know, let's say, uh, travel more, buy a motorcycle, put down a deposit for a new home, or, you know, they just put back some money in their business to improve it. So how about you? Did you do anything like that? Are you planning to do anything like this? Well, I'm planning to do something, uh -huh. but it's too early to speak of it yeah. because, as I told, I have only done two months of work. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, we got in some money, but... Yeah, it's probably it's a it's a short it's, period it's of too, time. It's too, it's too it's too early to speak of it. But uh, if I were uh, incredible, let's say five years ago, it will be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, when uh, I saw the great picture of Codable. Mm -hmm. Uh, it changed how I look at the job, the market, everything. Oh, really? Yep, definitely. Uh huh. Wow, that's that's a huge impact. I mean. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, when you are a freelancer mm -hmm. or any mm -hmm. business owner, the sales is the most expensive yet unknown part of the job. Yeah, I know that. And uh, if you if you can develop something but you cannot sell, it's worthless. Codable just deletes that dilemma from the table. Yeah. Uh, if you are uh, willing to communicate, you can get clients. And when you get clients, you get the money and you can run your life, run your business, do anything you want. That's the key, and Codable is great value for that. Thank you so much. That that was like the best, one of the greatest ending to this uh, um, interview with you. So I think that's enough for today. It was super inter interesting hearing your story, Onur. Thank you for sharing it with me, with us. And once again, I would like to thank you uh, very much for spending your time with all of us. So wish you a great day and talk to you soon. Cheers. Talk to you soon. Bye. Codable handpicks the clients. So uh, if you are a freelancer, that's a blessing. Because uh, in many freelancing platforms, you will see many huge projects. But they are never, ever serious about the project. In Codable, that's not the case. Every project is a serious project. Every client is a seri serious client.